click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends today we are going to discuss about principle of operation of inverter so friends as we all read about the semiconductor devices and how does it operate and what kind of output voltages and output current we are getting we learned about rectifier a rectifier converts an ac voltage to a dc voltage we derived the mathematical expressions about rectifier but now friends is it possible that we can convert a dc voltage to an ac voltage what i mean is that can i convert a dc constant voltage to an pulse rating and inverting voltage so this thing is possible by using an inverter so friends the function of an inverter is that it converts a dc value to an ac value so it converts a direct current to an alternating current so friends let's talk about how does it operate and the principle of operation so friends here i have used two voltage sources a value vs by 2 and vs by 2 where vs is the let's say it's the source voltage now i have connected a resistance here which is r and i have connected two diodes d1 and d2 and i have connected two transistors q1 and q2 so friends now let's convert this dc voltage to an ac voltage so friends if i give a gate pulse to this transistor for a specific time and after that amount of time i give the second pulse to this transistor gate terminal then what happens is while q1 is on the current will start flowing through resistor r in this direction again if i stop the gate pulse at q1 and i just switch off q1 and i switch on q2 then at that point of time current will flow through the resistor in this direction that means we are getting two different voltages with different directions as the direction of current changes in different time interval depending on the switching on state of the two transistors we are getting inverted voltages across the resistive load that we have connected so hence friends a dc voltage easily got converted to an ac voltage so let's talk about it in a bit detail manner friends so friends if you can see this diagram here so here i'm giving a supply vs by 2 so for the time interval 0 to t not by 2 where t not is my total time interval so from 0 to t not by 2 as my transistor q1 is on so i am getting a positive voltage across the resistive load because the direction of current is from right to left as you can clearly see in this diagram friends so when q1 is on current flows from right to left now friends from the time interval t not by 2 to t0 as the direction of current flow reverses because we are switching off one transistor and switching on the other transistor the current flows in a reverse direction so we are getting a reverse voltage across the resistor so here is the reverse voltage that is minus vs by 2 from the time t not by 2 to t not hence the current follows the same wave form for example now friends let's talk about the current i1 let's say current i1 is the current that is flowing through the load when transistor q1 is on let's say now friends when q1 is on as we all could see that from 0 to t not by 2 this is the time interval so when q1 is on we are getting a positive current from the time interval 0 to t not by 2 now friends after that when we switch on q2 that is the second transistor the maximum value of the voltage that we are getting is vs by 2 as you can clearly see in this diagram and the minimum value of the voltage is minus vs by 2 and the maximum value of the current is vs by 2r and the minimum value of the current would be zero the maximum value of the current when the second transistor is on is again vs by 2r and the minimum value is zero now friends let's talk about the principle of operation in a bit more detail now friends if we connect an inductor in series with a resistor so it becomes an rl load so whenever an inductor is connected in an inverter which we used in this diagram here let's see how the current flows 
Now friends, as we all know, inductor has a tendency to get charged and to get discharged. So it allows the current to rise slowly and to fall slowly. So friends, if we draw a diagram or if you draw a wave where let x axis I'm taking uh, the time and in the y axis I'm taking the current across the inductor. So here you can see from zero to this point of time the diode D1 is on and the inductor slowly getting charged and from this point of time to this point of time where Q1 is on that the first transistor is on the inductor slowly rises and reaches to the peak value and after that when inductor completely gets charged it slowly starts discharging so when d2 is on because d2 and d1 both are the free wheeling diode which we already discussed what are free wheeling diode free wheeling diode d1 and d2 are used for the discharging network of the inductor now from this point of time to this point of time again the inductor starts discharging through d2 so d2 is on and from this point of time to this point of time when we switch on the q2 that is the second transistor then again inductor completely discharges and after that completely gets charged to the negative peak amount of current so friends this is how an inductive load works in case of an inverter to summarize friends so today we discussed about how we can convert a dc value to an ac value using the transistors and how we can connect an inductive load and what happens when we connect an inductive load we saw the waveform and what happens when we connect a resistive load we saw the waveform thank you so much friends for watching this video please subscribe to ekida and stay tuned with ekida thanks so much now friends let's calculate the average output voltage so this is equal to 2 by T naught where T naught is the total time period integral 0 to T naught by 2 the source voltage square divided by 4 dt under root now this will be equal to half of the source voltage which we saw in the earlier waveform now friends let's calculate one more parameter let's say this is the instantaneous voltage instantaneous voltage is the voltage at any point of time And this is given by summation n starts from 1, 3, 5 to infinite to Vs by n pi sin n omega t. Now, friends, now friends, if we calculate the RMS value of the fundamental wave, and this will be given by V1 is equal to. So friends, here you can see the RMS voltage or the RMS value of the fundamental wave is given by 2 Vs divided by root 2 pi which is equal to 0 0.45 into Vs. Thank you so much friends for watching this video. Please subscribe to Ikeda and stay tuned with Ikeda. Thank you so much.